Well, welcome everybody. And we're here today, we're going to talk about uh, booth hopping. And as well as talking about, you know, booth hopping, um, we'll talk about most asked questions. How do we answer some of the, the questions now that we have not just greyhounds, but also, you know, the lurchers, the greyhound mixes. Um, we'll also talk about the different types of dogs, um, kind of bring you up to speed on that. And then some final thoughts. Um, so anyway, so let's let's get started. Um, booth hopping. You know, some of you have done booths before; others have not. Um, but kind of some basics, um, things that you'll need to bring um, with you to a booth. Um, whoever's man, you know, op the main operator for the booth. So you'll need a display piece, um, be it a banner or other identifier, making sure you know um, that people understand that this is Greyhound Pets Incorporated. Um, and that you're there with, you know, Greyhound and Lurcher information. Um, the, and we do have uh, banners available for all our booth ops, so if you don't have one already, just let us know, we'll make sure you get one. Um, plastic donation jar. Um, you'll want that, you know, on, on your table. And it's a good idea if you have it, just put um, some seed money in the jar, just a few dollar bills, and then place the donation jar at the front of the table where people can easily access it. Um, and make sure it's you know, clearly labeled so people know that it's for donations. Uh, another thing that can help with donations is uh, um, our donation vests on the dogs. And we have those available. And you know, they'll say donations or they just have a little clear pocket on them where you can put, you know, like a dollar bill in there and the kids usually love to, you know, throw, put money in the, in the pockets. So uh, those are available for you as well. Um, at the end of the booth, the donations need to go to um, our treasurer, Robin James, um, for deposit. And those should be sent with a funds transmittal form. Um, and the funds tran transmittal form is available on our volunteers forms page on our website. Um, so just print that out, put that with the money um, in, in an envelope and just identify that, you know, which booth it came from and the, the amount of money enclosed. Um, and if you are uh, needing to mail it, um, just mail it with the funds transmittal form, not cash of course, but um, you know, convert it to a check and mail that um, with the funds transmittal form um, to uh, Robin. Um, the table. You want a table, and you don't want a table that's you know too terribly big. You don't want a big table like the one I'm sitting at here. Um, you know something that's maybe about um, four foot long, maybe you know a couple feet wide, or a little card table works well as, um, if you have that. And talk to the store that you're working with or the location that you're working with, because a lot of times they have tables available for you to use so you don't have to lug a table around. Um, so check with them. Um, and you'll want to bring some sort of tablecloth for the, the, the table and a chair to sit at. Let's see, what else do you need? Uh, you want water and bowl for the dogs and be sure to place that water bowl either to the side or underneath the table so that nobody's um, trips over it doesn't you know doesn't quite get knocked over that that didn't talk to <laughs> so it doesn't get knocked over quite so easily um, another good thing with it with the bowls the water bowls is put a towel underneath so that any dribbles or what have you are caught by the um, the towel and not spread all over the floor um, you'll also want a dog bed um, for you know the dogs and you want to be careful where you place that dog bed. You don't want it in the walkway. You don't want it where people are going to trip over it. Um, you're going to, uh, um, uh, you know, place it and try not to put it right in front of the table so that, um, you know, people can still get to the table and see the information and what have you. Um, what some folks do is set up an X pen um, behind the table and put the dogs in there and then you can bring the dogs out one at a time to greet people um, as needed. Um, and you know the dog beds, uh, everybody has different types but you know uh, sometimes just something a little you know doesn't have to be terribly you know fat or thick um, and n not too overly big. Uh, you also want plastic bags and paper towel for cleanup. Um, 
be it, you know, if the dog makes a mess, uh, somebody spills something, what have you, you want to get that cleaned up right away. You'll also want a uh, pen and paper um, for taking notes or jotting down information for potential adopters. Uh, name tags. We have those GPI white name tags and if you, um, uh, if you don't have one already, just let us know and we will get you one. You'll also want uh, business cards and we have uh, pre-printed GPI business cards with our website and our 800 number on them and we can gladly give you some a stock of those. You can also, there's a template on um, our website under the volunteer, volunteers forms section where you can put your own name and what have you in the template and print those out. Um, something I do is I go to Vistaprint. You can get them really cheaply at like Vistaprint or I think Zazzle's another site. And for like 10 bucks, you get like 200 cards or something like that. So um, there's another way to get some business cards. Uh, you do need to make sure that though it has the correct GPI logo on that. So before printing anything, just check with, uh, you can come to me and I'll, I'll let you know, make sure you've got the right logo for there. Because we do need to have a registered trademark on those, uh, anything with our logo on it. Uh, you want to have some GPI brochures. Um, so have those handy. And if you don't have any, let us know. We'll get you stock. Uh, another thing that you need is a spray bottle for cleaning up messes um, or keeping rowdy dogs in line. Or if it's warmer and you're doing a booth outside, maybe to wet the dogs down a little bit, help keep them cool. You want for yourself, you want to make sure that you're wearing a clean Greyhound shirt, um, preferably a GPI shirt if you have one. Um, if you don't, that's fine. Um, just a presentable shirt um, if you don't have a, a Greyhound shirt. Um, and we do have, you know, the volunteer shirts um, available on our website. I think they're $20 on our website, um, various and sundry colors. So if you'd like one of those, you can order that online. You'll also want a first, small first aid kit. Um, if nothing else, some vet wrap and antibiotic. And usually for a few band-aids are a good thing to throw in there as well. Uh, and if you're going to be outside, you want to make sure you've got paper weights Keep, so your papers aren't flying around as the wind catches them. Let's see, what else do you need? Um, A-frame signs. Um, they're great to place out on the sidewalk or the street or you know, some other location um, so the passers um, know that there are greyhounds there. And it really does bring people in. Um, I've had, can't tell you how many times I've done a booth and had a sign out on the street and folks have stopped in and said, hey, I heard you have greyhounds here, you know, can I see? So, uh, you know, it really does bring people in. Uh, one thing you do want to be careful about with uh, those A-frame signs is uh, know your city or location. Some cities do not allow signs on the sidewalks or in certain locations, so be sure you check that out. Um, because you will lose your signs, and we've lost a few over the years. Um, also, put up a sign about volunteering, you know, at the booth. Um, encourage people to volunteer if, if they have the time. And just right now, uh, we're not looking for a whole lot of um, a turnout volunteers. Um, we've, all our spots are pretty much full, but, you know, over time that may change um, and certainly encourage people to contact us about volunteering. So now that you've got all the stuff, um, you know, what do you need to talk about at the booth? And there are just some guidelines here about things to make sure that you do or don't say um, at, you know, at the booth. Um, first of all, you want to make sure you're talking about the benefits of owning these different types of dogs. Um, the X racers um, are retired. They are not rescues. So be careful when you talk about the, um, you know, the, the retired racers. Um, we don't use the word rescue when related to those dogs. Um, however, the, uh, the lurchers or some of the greyhound mixes, um, many of those are what we call rescues. They're rescued off the street, out the desert, um, from a shelter, um, so they are rescues. Um, the other thing that, you know, about using the term rescue, um, we really want people to truly want a dog and we don't want them to, um, you know, play to the, you know, the sympathy route. We want them to want a dog and not just, you know, because they're rescuing a dog. Um, let's see, make sure your comments are positive, whether about the dogs, the track, 
you know, other groups, um, volunteers, adopters, return dogs, previous owners, you know, etc. Just make sure that they're positive. Um, we want, you know, good relations with, you know, the, the, the locations. We want good relations with, you know, other groups. We have to work with other groups. Um, and, you know, make sure that you're not having conversations um, amongst yourselves. If somebody walks up to the booth, make sure you're paying attention to them and talking to them. Um, let people know how spoiled our dogs are and how much they love company. Um, and that's never a hard thing to do with our dogs. And just a reminder again, any negative comments, keep those to yourself or for discussions away from the booth. Um, introduce people to greyhounds and lurchers in general. Um, you don't want to go into a lot of detail at a booth um, unless people are super seriously interested. Um, you just want to go into the general benefits of owning a greyhound. And also, you know, don't talk specifics about an individual dog unless someone is specifically asking about that dog. Um, and if you don't, you know, know or aren't sure about the specifics of a certain dog, just say so and offer to find out the information. Um, we don't want to give people false information about a dog. And another thing to think about is, is really don't to do too many of, you know, my dog stories. Don't talk about your dog all the time. You know, you want to talk about greyhounds or lurchers in general. Um, you know, get folks interested in them. And, you know, folks don't want to always hear all the stories about your dog. Uh, you don't want to make over generalizations about the dogs. And as an example, um, you know, don't say these dogs aren't ball chasers just because your dog doesn't chase a ball. You know, there are plenty of, you know, greyhounds that do chase balls. Um, so that's just an example. Um, applications, if people are interested in submitting an application, you can either provide them with an application if you brought one with you, or you can direct them to the website, and that's actually the better route to go because they can um, complete the application online and then submit it in um, online. And uh, just, just so you know that those applications online, they come to me and then I then forward them out to the applicable regional VP and then the regional VP will work with those folks to get a home visit set up. Uh, let's see, fenced yard, we, you know, adopters must have a fence unless they're in an apartment or a condo, and it must be a minimum of four feet in height. And with some of these, um, the lurchers, um, in particular the dogs out of the UAE, we're finding that many of them need six foot fences. Um, but our minimum is four foot. And still, go, still goes no invisible fences. Oh. Um, our adoption um, fee is a minimum dollar amount, and a good way to phrase it is our adoption donation is a minimum donation of $350. Let's see, our kennel, um, it's not open to the public. I know people sometimes say they want to, you know, stop by the kennel, and the only time the kennel is open to the public is when we have the kennel booths here. And that's usually the second Saturday of every month. Um, so, you know, send people to the, um, the calendar on our website um, to find out when those booths are. Um, approved adopters must make an appointment to meet our available dogs. They can't just stop in at any time. So uh, once they're approved, they can schedule time to meet our dogs. Uh, let's see. At as far as handling dogs at the booth, um, available dogs must be handled by a GPI volunteer um, who's over 18. We want folks who um, know how to handle the dogs and uh, can handle, you know, a dog in, you know, some some unusual circumstances. You never know what uh, booths are going to throw at you. Um, some other things about, uh, you know, booths. Um, at the end of the booth, you want to make sure you clean up the area and be sure to leave it as nice if, or nicer than you found it. Um, you want to thank the store manager and it's really important to have a good relationship with the, the store manager or the location manager. Um, so, so thank them and you know, tell them you know, how much we appreciate you know, their efforts you know, to help us and stuff find, you know, uh, find us home, find homes for the dogs. 
Um, the, the other thing about you know booths is make sure you're paying attention to where everybody is um, at the booth. Um, make sure you're not you know expanding out over the walkway, you know the aisles and what have you. You know not everybody wants to stop and see the greyhound, so we need to be you know courteous and uh, mindful of the the locations, other customers. So make sure that you're paying attention, keeping the dogs you know contained, beds aren't sprawled out wherever. You know keep it into the contained area, and the stores really appreciate it when we're considerate of their other customers. Um, at the end of the booth, too, you want to ask the store manager if they have any dog food available for donation or, you know, toys or other things as well. You may, maybe it's broken bags or just out of date, you know, bags, canned food, dry food, um, and all of that needs to come to the kennel if, if you can get those items. Um, if um, Oh, I was going to say, I, we used to sell some items at uh, the locations, but we really don't do that any longer, um, so it's really not an issue anymore. But um, if that's the case, um, those funds would need to go to the treasurer, and you just need to make a, a record of what you actually sold, but that really doesn't apply much these days. Um, some other things about if you're volunteering at a booth and you're not the booth op. Um, you want to check with the booth operator before bringing your own greyhound. Um, or lurcher, because um, you may, your help may be needed in holding a foster dog, or there may be too many dogs available for the space. Um, some spaces, you know, we have quite a bit of room, and other locations, it's quite small, so we need to keep it to, you know, maybe two or three dogs. Um, you also want to uh, check with the booth scheduler, uh, Kath, um, Kathy Monroe, so that she makes sure that there's adequate, you know, staffing for each booth. Um, so if you can help at a booth, you know, let Kathy Monroe know. Um, and if it is okay to bring your own dog, you want to make sure that that dog is clean and appropriately attired, meaning, you know, are their nails trimmed? Do they, do, do they look, you know, brushed and clean? You know, um, are their ears clean? You know, no fleas? you know, that you've got the correct, you know, collars and leashes on them. And if the event is going to be outside or it's a cool day, make sure you've got a coat for the dog um, because you don't want the dog standing out because you're going to be standing around, not walking around. So you want to make sure that the dog is warm enough. You know, want to keep the table and um, the area where you are neat and tidy. Um, you want to create a good first impression for folks. Um, you don't want to block those pathways, as I mentioned before. You know, make sure that there are other customers can get through, you know, through the aisles um, and past you. Um, and keep food and that sort of stuff, you know, off the um, the table if you can. You know, put it to the side or what have you. And you know, certainly entitled to go, you know, take a drink or take a break or what have you. Um, but walk away from the table to eat and drink. You know, don't do that right there at the at the table. And Preferably, we really don't want children at the booth, um, and absolutely no children would be holding leashes of available dogs. Um, you know, trying to watch, you know, a child and the dog and visitors at the same time can be challenging. So you really need to be able to focus on the dog that you're holding and talking about. Uh, you want to make sure you've read and understand understood our GPI materials, be it volunteer manual, our adopter's guide, the booth materials. And if you're not sure, if you have questions, you know, ask another senior volunteer or ask a board member. We're always happy to answer questions. Uh, you want to make sure you've signed a volunteer agreement. Um, anybody who volunteers needs to have signed that agreement. And uh, make sure you're on time. Um, if not, you know, a little bit early to help set up. So you want to make sure that you're there in time so that uh, we're set and ready to go at the start of the booth. Um, let's see, a few little other etiquette things here. We already talked about being on time and no food or drink, you know, on the table. Um, and cleaning up afterwards. Really important, pay attention to visitors and always be polite and courteous. And I know folks can be some challenging sometimes, so, but you want to make sure that um, you're paying attention to those people and not talking amongst yourselves. Uh, you also want to make sure you're paying attention to the dog you're holding. Um, that dog should not be out six foot in front of you, um, you know, where people can, you know, 
trip over them, what have you. Um, you want to make sure that the dog's next to you um, so you can see what the dog's doing. And not just the dog, but see what people are coming, you know, coming at you. Uh, booze are notorious for, you know, the little kids running up, I want to say hello to the dog, you know. And, uh, you know, you got to pay attention. Not all dogs love kids and, you know, face on with the dog. That's pretty scary for some of these dogs. Um, and you don't want to let, you know, people uh, hug your dog or get their long hair in their faces and what have you. It's scary to these dogs. Um, so pay attention to that. You know, keep them on a short leash. And, you know, if there are, you know, small dogs in the area, not all our dogs, as you know, get along with small dogs. So pay attention, S know what's going on around you. And, you know, if your dog is not, you know, comfortable with, you know, little kids or perhaps small dogs, either maybe they shouldn't be at a booth or just walk away. Um, there's nothing wrong with just walking away and saying, hey, my, you know, my dog's not good with little kids or what have you. Um, and, you know, the, uh, you know, think about your dog. If you are taking your dog to a booth, um, you know, know your dog. You know, know what their comfort level is with, you know, busy situations. Some of these booths get unbelievably, you know, busy. Um, so you really want to pay attention to that and watch, you know, your dog's comfort level. Um, if they're you know, you can see that they're kind of getting stressed out or a little tired, you know, either put them in that X pen, you know, behind the table or perhaps go and, you know, take a walk in the parking lot for a little bit and then come back, okay? And be sure you're picking up after your dogs too. Make sure you got those poop bags in your pocket. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, and the other thing also is, is watch for any leg lifting. And if, if your dog happens to pee on something, clean it up. <laughs> um, the other thing with your dog is make sure you're holding on to the leash. You know, we're always educating people on how to, you know, hold their dogs, put your hand through the loop on the leash and keeping the dog next to you. So make sure we're doing that same thing. You know, even if you've had your dog for years and know the dog really well and you really may not have to hold on to that leash quite so tightly, make sure we're setting a good example and, you know, educating people on the right way to start out. Uh, Let's see, we already talked about keeping walkways clear, keeping the area tidy, um, and cleaning up any messes, pay attention to children, um, and not chit-chatting amongst you, you know, yourselves uh, when there are people visiting. Um, and always, if you have any questions, just you know, ask a, you know, a senior volunteer um, or a board member. We're always happy to answer questions. So that's basic booth opping. And <coughs> What I'd like to do now is, uh, rather than talk about most asked questions, uh, I'd like to talk about the different types of dogs we're getting now and a little bit about them because then uh, that'll lead into most asked questions and how do you answer those questions. Um, so you should have several documents here. Um, we'll, we'll start with um, perhaps the lurchers first that come out of the Midwest. Um, so the lurchers, uh, they're what we call field trial racers. Um, they are mixes. Uh, in particular, if they come out of the Midwest, they tend to be mixed with um, coonhound or something along those lines. Um, but it, it varies, and they do use the NGA, the National Greyhound Association Greyhounds, the racing greyhounds, as breeding stock for their lurchers. Um, so sometimes we will come across a full-blooded greyhound, tattooed or not, um, from the Midwest um, or, you know, one that sure looks like a, you know, a full-blooded greyhound and they very well may be. Um, so they come to us um, from the Midwest and we work with a group called the American Lurcher Project there in the Midwest and basically a lurcher just means that they're a greyhound mix. So they're, you know, a sighthound crossed with something else um, and they usually have pretty, you know, dominant, you know, greyhound features. Um, lurchers in general, um, I would say, tend to be a little higher energy than your typical racing greyhound. Um, do they still love the attention and, you know, um, people and what have you? Generally, yes. Um, but they'll be the ones that, you know, you'll need to be, you know, 
hiking with them, playing ball, what have you. Um, so a little more, you know, energy. It takes a little longer to tire them out than your typical greyhound. Um, and yeah, since uh, 2014, we've brought in uh, 39 lurchers from the Lurcher Project. Then the other dogs, we also bring dogs in from the United Arab Emirates. Um, and those dogs um, are, um, they're usually mixes, usually mixed with a Saluki. Um, they're, you know, often found, you know, in the desert running loose. Um, and they're either taken to shelters or individuals pick, you know, pick them up. And they try and place them locally. If they can't, that's then where we come into, you know, into play. Um, I would say overall the, the, the lurchers from uh, the United Arab Emirates uh, tend to be um, a little smaller. Even if they're pure blood greyhounds, the greyhounds from that part of the world are smaller than our NGA greyhounds. Um, they can be a little timid around people because they really haven't been treated very kindly. Um, and most of the, the, the UAE dogs will require a six foot fence. Um, they're a little more agile than our, our NGA greyhounds. Um, very sweet, very special dogs, um, but they are um, typically mixes. Then we have our, oh, I, sh I should say, since um, 2017, we've brought in 14 um, lurchers from the, from the UAE so far. And then we go, we also bring uh, greyhounds and greyhound mixes in from South Korea. And we partner with a group called uh, Team Inch Sighthound Rescue. And they're just a group of volunteers who uh, rescue the dogs from shelters, off the street, what have you, and then find groups to um, take them uh, here in North America. And same thing as the UAE dogs, um, they tend to be, or the lurchers, they tend to be um, a little higher energy, higher endurance than our typical NGA greyhounds. Um, they, um, you know, some look very greyhoundy, others perhaps a little less so. And generally haven't been treated kindly in their lives, um, but very grateful, very sweet, most of them. And since uh, through the end of 2018, we've taken in 42 uh, greyhound mixes from Team Inch. Then we have the, the Irish greyhounds. And the Irish greyhounds are retired racers. They're just like our NGA dogs. Um, in fact, we do see some Irish dogs here in the USA used for breeding. Um, so they're retired racers. Some of them are track greyhounds. Some of them are used for what they call coursing. Um, and coursing is, um, for those of you who are familiar with that, is they chase live prey. Um, so anyway, um, all lovely dogs. I would say the Irish greyhounds tend to be um, a little stockier than our NGA dogs, but about the same size, and they're usually tattooed the same as our NGA dogs. Um, and we've brought in, um, through the end of 2018, we've brought in 71 Irish Greyhounds so far. So um, the other dogs that we've brought in, we've brought in um, two Galgos so far. And we're still kind of learning about those dogs. Um, don't know if we'll continue or not. They're, they tend to be um, smaller. They're a lot more agile um, than our NGA dogs. Um, and I'll run through some, some information on each of the different um, types of dogs here next here. Um, the other dogs that we've brought in are from Macau, China with the closing of the Canadrome track. And they are retired racers out of um, Australia. And I would say the Macau dogs are rescues, quite honestly. Um, the Canadrome was not a nice place. Um, but they are uh, full-blooded greyhounds, just like our NGA dogs. So uh, we have this little chart um, that we put together and kind of comparing the racing greyhounds versus the lurchers versus the international dogs. 
and some just some basics. We'll go through some of this here. Um, you can read it at another time here in more detail, but just some basics like fence requirements. Our NGA dogs, minimum of four feet, but some dogs will require five or six feet. Kind of the same thing with Ireland and the Midwest lurchers. The UAE dogs, the South Korean dogs, and the Spanish dogs typically um, need many of them need a six foot fence um, and the Spanish dogs definitely need a six foot fence. The, um, as far as jumping, individual dogs for you know most of the different types of dogs, um, the Spanish dogs tend to be jumpers so just something to be aware of there. Can they be an only dog? Um, Individual cases for you know the NGAs, the Irish, the Lurchers, the UAE dogs, and South Korean dogs. The Galgos from Spain, they have always lived in packs, so they typically cannot be an only dog. Um, small dog trainable. Most of the dogs is going to be individual dogs as to whether they can be um, you know live okay with small dogs or not. The Spanish Galgos typically are not going to be okay with um, small dogs. And the same thing with cats, they typically are not going to be okay with um, cats. Um, the, um, are they going to be okay with other breed dogs? Going to be individual, um, depending on the, you know, the type of dog. Um, quite likely most of these dogs, like the NGA dogs, you know, um, they, they may have never met another breed dog in their life. So it's, you'll have to see how they do with other dogs and introduce them slowly. Uh, using a leash versus a harness on these dogs. Most of these dogs will use a martingale collar and then the leash collar combo, the mar martingale uh, leash collar combo on them. Um, some dogs are going to require a harness. Um, the Spanish Galgos, we use harnesses with them. They're pretty agile little guys. <laughs> um, and with some of the like more, more shy dogs or a little more active dogs, we're using um, harnesses with them. Um, have they lived in a home? I, in most cases, most of these types of dogs have never lived in a home. Um, on occasion, sometimes the South Korean dogs or the UAE dogs may have lived in a home, but, but unlikely, you know, not. Um, energy level, endurance level, uh, NGA dogs, you know, average en energy, they're sprinters. Same thing with the Irish dogs. Uh, the Midwest lurchers, uh, they tend to be a higher energy endurance than a typical greyhound. The same thing with the UAE dogs and the South Korean dogs. Um, and the, the Spanish galgos, um, they're definitely higher energy and endurance and they're way more animated and agile than your typical greyhound. They really do need an active home. Um, are they housebroken or not? It's going to depend upon the dog. You know, the NGA dogs and the, the Irish dogs tend to be crate trained. The lurchers, the UAE dogs, um, typically not. The galgos, no. Um, so you have to teach them, but most of them learn pretty quickly. Um, chewers, generally no. Um, with all these types of dogs, sometimes with the galgos, the galgos, excuse me, um, they have a tendency to be chewers. Um, training, they all need positive based training. Um, some of the um, the dogs off the street from out of South Korea or the UAE and definitely the Spanish dogs, they're very street smart and they're thinkers. So you, you it takes a lot more to work with them than your typical NGA or your Irish racer. Um, muzzles, have they ever used uh, muzzles? Um, the NGA dogs, uh, yes. The Irish dogs depend. Sometimes they're, they're used to muzzles, sometimes they're not. The rest of the types of dogs have, have mostly um, unlikely to have seen a muzzle. Um, so, but we do try to get them used to a muzzle here. And then exercise wise, you know, the NGA dogs, the Irish dogs, you know, they need one daily long walk and then some run time. Once you get into some of the mixes, you're going to need, um, you know, one to two daily long walks and good run time. And the Spanish dogs, you're definitely going to need that extra, you know, those longer walks. And some of our mixes are great, but you know, if somebody's looking for, 
you know, a hiking companion or a jogging companion, what have you, the mixes are great for that. Um, so, of course, individual dogs, but, you know, they tend to have that higher endurance. So if you're looking for that hiking buddy or what have you, you know, have, have folks think about a mix. Um, let's see. People, you know, how are they going to be around people? Most of the NGA dogs and the Irish dogs, they love people. Um, and so the, the lurchers, too, uh, mostly are. Uh, some of the ones, the UAE, South Korea, and Spain, they can be a little uh, wary of people um, to start out with, um, but they soon learn that people are good. Um, and we do some, see some shyer dogs um, out of some of these locations just because of the way they've been handled in their past or may have been handled in their past. Um, health concerns, well, with our NGA dogs, of course, hookworm. Ugh, I, bane of our <laughs> existence, hookworm. Um, so that's always an issue with our, our NGA dogs. Um, the tick-borne diseases, uh, particularly babesia, and then, of course, arthritis as they age. The Irish dogs, uh, tick-borne diseases and arthritis as they age. Uh, the Midwest lurchers, uh, tick-borne diseases, uh, Lyme and heartworm um, are concerns there. And the UAE, uh, it's mostly lack of care from living on the streets or poor diet that are concerns there. We haven't seen so far any typical diseases or what have you, um, you know, coming with those dogs. They're all. Um, tested for screw worm before they come here, but they're, um, uh, that shouldn't be a concern once they're here. Um, South Korean dogs, we see heartworm in many of them, and then lack of care from living on the streets um, and poor diet. The Spanish dogs, we see tick-borne diseases, and we see leash mania. So just something to be aware of the different types of dogs there. Uh, we still don't see the typical, you know, um, you know, diseases that you see in some of the other breeds, the blindness, the deafness, the hip dysplasia, what have you. We're, we're not seeing that in typically in any of these dogs. Um, blood work, um, you know, you know that, uh, you know, our NGA greyhounds, they have some different, you know, uh, blood values than, you know, other breeds. Um, same thing with the Irish um, greyhounds. Um, with the the mixes from these other locations, we're finding that some have the greyhound, you know, typical greyhound blood values and others do not. Um, so you'll need to know your dog and whether they have typical, you know, greyhound readings or not when you're working with your vet. Um, so that's the different types of dogs. Um, so that leads us into, well, how do I answer some of those, those most asked questions? And, you know, some of the questions that, you know, I typically hear at booths, and I'm sure you all do, you know, as well, is, okay, what are greyhounds lur lurchers key personality traits? And, you know, the greyhounds, typically polite, eager to please, love to share life with you. Um, most greyhounds are mild, gentle, and quiet by nature. Um, and, you know, will spend a lot of time sleeping in the corner of the room, you know, or even bid for a part of the sofa. Um, the lurchers can be a higher energy endurance and will need, generally will need more exercise than your typical retired racer. Um, are greyhounds and lurchers hyper? And generally, no. Um, the retired racing greyhounds, of course, love to, you know, run and they usually do a couple laps around your yard and then they head for the softest spot. Um, the lurches also love to run, um, but they will need a little more run time before settling down on that soft pillow. Are greyhounds and lurchers healthy? Um, well, we talked a little bit about blood work and you know some typical health concerns there. Um, the racing greyhounds, of course, are bred for health and speed. Uh, the lurchers, um, they come from various backgrounds. Um, again, we haven't seen some of the typical genetic disorders like the blindness and the deafness, you know, hip dysplasia, et cetera, you know, with those dogs either. Um, so on, on the whole, they tend to be, you know, fairly healthy. Uh, greyhounds and many lurchers, um, they do have some, you know, sensitivity to certain drugs and chemicals. Um, of course, watch out for those tails, those long tails. <laughs> um, although with the lurchers, we're seeing that some of them, they've had their tails cut off for various and sundry reasons. Um, and uh, with the UAE, 
e dogs we've seen a number of them have their ears cut off so that uh, seems to be for various reasons there I've been told it's anywhere from you know reducing injury when they're running when they're racing um, and you know nipping at each other or I've also been told that um, they cut their ears off so they can't identify what the dog has been crossed with or to remove ear tattoos as well. So anyway, um, they're generally, you know, seem to be pretty healthy, um, but you know, they may be, have been exposed to diseases endemic to the area where they, come, they came from. So just something to be aware of. Um, important to keep the teeth cleaned. And, um, and of course, we still see, you know, um, you know, bone cancer in the greyhounds, um, as with any of the long-legged breeds. So, just something to be aware of there. Uh, do greyhounds lurchers need a lot of exercise? We sort of talked about it, you know, already. Um, they generally, you know, don't, you know, require a lot of exercise. But just like you and me, you need, you know, some daily exercise. Um, a good 30 minute walk three or four times a week is generally enough to keep your dog happy and healthy. Some of the mixes will need, or a younger dog will need more exercise than that though, so depending on the individual dog. Um, how long do greyhounds or lurchers live? Uh, typically what we've seen, they've been 12 to 15 years old. Um, the lurchers uh, we don't really know. We haven't worked with them long enough to see, you know, what age they get to, but we've certainly seen some older ones come in here. We've had, you know, lurchers in here that are 10, you know, plus years old, and they're still going strong, so. Um, how old are the dogs when we adopt them out? You know, typically the NGU racers have been sort of two to five years old. We're now seeing them coming in. We're getting the younger dogs um, that just aren't going to do, you know, they're seeing that they're not going to run well. So rather than holding on to them and working with them more, they're putting them out to adoption groups. We're also seeing brood moms, so they're a little bit older. Um, so we see the wide range, you know, we've got um, dogs in here from, you know, sort of six months old up to, you know, 10 plus years old, 12 years old. So we're seeing the full gambit there. Uh, what do the dogs eat? Whether they're a greyhound or a lurcher, they need to be on a good quality dry kibble. Um, you know, they don't do well on foods with a lot of fillers or a lot of table scraps. Um, how much do they eat? Um, depends on their activity level, depends on, um, you know, full-blooded, you know, or a lurcher. I would, typically, they're going to eat somewhere between three and five cups of dry kibble a day. Um, and why are they so skinny? They're naturally lean, and even the lurchers, they need to stay lean. Um, you know, they don't need to be, you know, fat labs. <laughs> they need to, you know, stay lean and mean. You need to see those. Um, the, uh, uh, the ribs and the uh, feel those hip bones and stuff. Although some of the lurchers, that'll be less obvious with them because of whatever they've been mixed with. Um, how do greyhounds and lurchers do with children? Um, generally, you know, they do fine, but you need, you know, children to be respectful of, you know, the dog's space, you know. Um, some of these dogs may have never seen children. Um, so you wanna make sure that, you know, when the dog is sleeping, that you know they can't get to um, the kids can't get to the dog that the dog has its own safe place to you know eat and sleep away from the children. Um, so greyhounds and lurchers tend to view children as puppies. In some cases, you know, female dogs will sometimes act maternally um, by you know nipping a little bit to you know bring them back in line. Um, but you know that's going to be depend on the you know the individual dog. Uh, how do greyhounds and lurchers do with cats and small dogs? Um, it's really an individual thing. Um, some some dogs are going to be fine with you know cats and small dogs. Others will not. Um, we do cat test all the dogs, um, and we you know small dog test as many as we can when we can. But we don't always get to you know do that. And that's why we always want people to bring their other dogs with them to meet the dogs. Um, why do uh, greyhounds and lurchers always have to be on a leash? Most of you know this already, but you know, 
These dogs have never been brought up around roads and cars and have no road sense. Their speed's up to 40 miles an hour in three strides. And even the lurchers, um, you know, many of those, they're bred for racing of, of varying kinds. Um, so that instinct, you know, kicks in, they see something move and they want to chase it. Um, so we need to be keeping these dogs on leash or in a securely fenced in area. Um, <clears throat> Some folks will come to you and say, I hate what they do to these animals. And the response there should be, you know, it's our belief and experience that the, the majority of racing greyhounds are well treated. Um, and if it's a business, if a greyhound is going to run well, it needs to be treated well. Um, there are always exceptions, um, but in our experience, those instances are rare. And the lurchers are rescues and may not have been treated well in the past but now they're in good hands and will be loved from here on. So if people want to get into the negatives of you know, racing and how they've been treated in the past, don't go there. Just say, hey, they're in good hands now, they're well loved, and they're going to have good lives from here on. Um, do greyhounds and lurchers make good guard dogs? Well, they make good watch dogs. They'll watch you, uh, the burglar, come in and out and maybe point out the cookie jar as, as they uh, make their way around the house, but that's about it. <laughs> um, even the lurchers um, really are not good watch dogs um, or good, good, excuse me, good guard dogs. Now let's see, other, then the next, some, some, some final thoughts. Um, meet and greets, they're supposed to be fun. Um, and they need to be fun for everybody, including the dogs. So it should be, you know, a conversation with folks. It's not a lecture. Um, you want to make sure that you're, you know, asking some questions of the people that are coming to the booth so that you know how to steer the conversation. Um, so ask them a few simple questions. And you don't have to grill them with a whole long list, but just ask a few questions to get the conversation started. You know, it's like, what is their home like? Do they live in a house or an apartment, you know? Um, do they have a, a fenced yard? You know, what type of fencing do they have? You know, uh, are they experienced? Have they had dogs before or not? You know, do they have other pets? Um, you know, it's, and how long will the dog be left alone during the day? Um, so, you know, ask those sorts of questions, you know, to start the conversation. Um, you also need to know, you know, what kind of lifestyle they have. You know, are, what sort of activities are they wanting to do with their dog? You know, do they want the hiking companion or do they want the, you know, the couch potato that's going to hang out with them? Um, do they live downtown or are they in a more suburban neighborhood or are they in a very rural area? Because um, that'll kind of drive what sort of dog we might steer them towards as well. You know, how busy is the area they live in? Is it very noisy, a lot, you know, lots of traffic, you know, or is it very quiet? Um, that'll affect what sort of, you know, dog they might want in that environment as well. Um, if they want to, you know, go on and discuss different types of dogs, um, you know, go ahead and do that. You know, give them the handouts about the different types of dogs, give them the summary matrix, and, you know, a GPI brochure. Um, if they're interested, tell them a little bit about the adoption process. You know, filling out the application online, then doing the, you know, we do the home visit, and that home visit should be about an hour to an hour and a half. And it's mainly a time to discuss what it's like to live with one of our dogs, offer tips, um, and also to answer questions for them. Um, and lastly, once they've been approved, then they'll set up an appointment to come meet our dogs and see which one best fits their family. Um, and, you know, as with any of this, you don't have to know the answers to all the questions. Um, if you don't know, say so. You know, jot down the question and their contact information and, um, and you know, at the at end of the booth, you know, work to, you know, speak to your regional VP or a board member or perhaps a senior volunteer and uh, get them the, the answer that they're looking for. Um, ple please don't wing it. Uh, we want to make sure that we're putting accurate information out there and we want it positive out there. So, and lastly, 
follow the KISS method. Keep it simple. Do not overwhelm people <laughs> with too much information. Um, you want to get them interested. You know, keep them interested, give them a few bits of information, but don't overload them with a whole bunch of information. Rather, encourage them to come back or schedule a home visit um, and perhaps go to the next step. Um, so those are um, some suggestions, some thoughts on how to run a booth, some information about now the, the, the dogs that we're handling. And, you know, an interesting now, I would say less than half of the dogs in our kennel are NGA dogs. So we're having to learn how to promote and work the, the, the lurchers and the mixes um, as well as our NGA dogs. So thank you and thank you for all you do for the dogs and GPI. Appreciate it.